being with us. Uh, stoked sure. to hear. Uh, stoked to hear the story of Frozen Soul. Thank you. So, um, why don't you uh, just take me back to the beginning? Um, how'd you get into music? Mm. Um. Well, I um. It started when I was probably like, I don't know, thirteen or fourteen. My um, mom got me a couple of CDs. I think it was like Lincoln Park Hybrid Theory and like Corn right. Issues or I don't know. It was a, All right. a bunch of those CDs and uh, and uh, it just kind of got me on like the heavier music train because before mm. that I didn't really have a concept of anything. I just heard what my parents and whatnot listened to. Yeah, and I just dove in deeper and deeper. I got my first drum set at like sixteen and uh just kind of kept growing got into heavier music started delving into hardcore and punk mm -hmm. um, naturally like started hitting shows and meeting people and was this around like high school time yeah probably like 10th or 11th grade yeah and what then, made uh, your mom get you these uh these these heavier records <laughs> Was she I, like, uh... my well so my um my grandparents owned a club in Fort Worth through okay. like the seventies and some part of the eighties, I think it's called Savvy's. It was like mm -hmm. a, um, it was like just a rock club. Uh, yeah. Okay. And, so, uh, so they were, uh, they were in the scene a little bit. Yeah. And, uh, actually Pantera played a lot of their like first shows there. Oh, awesome. And, uh, yeah. And like the hair metal days and all that stuff. And, um, so when I was born, my mom would naturally like she was working there. So she would have to take me. And uh, she just like throw me on the drum sets that were there. I guess the bands that were setting up. Yeah, um, that's fun. She just had me uh, play drums and uh, told me that she definitely got yelled at a lot for it. But, <laughs> yeah, um, some drummers can be pretty possessive about their drum kits. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we just, well, I just grew from there. I kind of always, I'd always felt like I had like you know had it in me. You know, yeah, it was what I wanted. Right. And it just progressed and progressed and progressed. And I gave my life to it, honestly. <laughs> so you're in high school um, and you're, you know, you're jamming by yourself, but uh, you, you get a couple buds together and, and start a band. Yeah, I, uh, I started like kind of delving into like metalcore and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I met some guys going to shows in Dallas, which is like 30 minutes from where I live. Mm -hmm. And um took my mom's car and drove way out there when I didn't really know how to drive and <laughs> you know, didn't really know how to play drums either. And we just got together and they already had material written and we just kind of went from there. We played one show and then broke up. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like constantly on the search. Mm -hmm. um, I met a friend of mine um, and who's um, like no longer in my life, unfortunately, but mm -hmm. he, um, he kind of got me to like push myself further and we started the band um my my first real band end times which is still going nowadays mm. kind of on hiatus but we started out as like you know hardcore punk band sounding like trial and uh stuff like that and uh, right and then progressed on into metal and uh yeah i mean that's kind of the start of it i mean yeah it, we went from there then that band had you know lots of trials and tribulations and then started my uh hardcore band vulgar display and um we did quite a bit of touring with that band and uh that band went defunct and then got in times back together again and wrote an entire record that's um still being finished up right now and then nice you know, in the meantime we started frozen soul um and it's sort of been this band itself has been you know a few years in the making so mm -hmm. um and it just kind of in the last year and a half sort of just all just rapidly sped up <laughs> way beyond yeah. what we thought. <laughs> well, a lot of people have a lot more time this year suddenly. So <laughs> yeah, for sure. So tell me a little bit about uh, Frozen Soul and, and, and what went into putting these songs together. Um, well, a lot of a lifetime of pain, man. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it, it, it it was one of those things where, you know, death metal started meaning more and more to, uh, to us. And so we were writing some riffs and stuff that were just a little bit beyond what we were trying to do and trying to like portray within times. Mm -hmm. Um, so we just 
started up frozen soul and you know started putting all that depression and all that you know that kind of mental anguish that the world needs you you know and decided to give it a face and that's that's what went into it um i mean we uh it, it came together pretty quick i mean we kind of like wrote a few things and like things just truly made sense to us uh and we just really liked it and just yeah i mean that's really it i mean as far as like the beginning of the band and a lot more went into writing like the lp because we realized that uh you know that this was like this was much more what we wanted to do than we originally thought and so mm. we started really delving into like our sound and what we wanted to sound like and you know who we wanted to be influenced by and so there was a whole lot of writing riffs with our mouths and recording constant <laughs> voice, you know, voice memos. And then, you know, trying to like just bounce ideas off each other. And a, a lot of, a lot of sweat went into uh, the writing and for sure. Yeah. The, uh, the production on it sounds, sounds great too. I was, uh, I was, I was listening to, um, to your newest single um, right before you hopped on. And uh, are you, are you guys uh, working with anyone to produce the record or uh, did, are you guys self-produced? Um, well, you know, it's kind of like we're self-produced. Uh, so our friend Slade Williams, he's who produced the demo. Okay. We actually brought him along with us to help with the LP. Um, but our one of our original guitar players, Daniel, Daniel Schmuck, mm -hmm. he's actually he was one of Frozen Soul's original guitar players, but he's also the lead guitar player for End Times. Mm, so I've okay. been writing music with him for years now. And um we kinda it's kind of all in the family. You know, we decided to stick we there were some names that we were thinking about going with when for producing the record. Um, one being like Arthur Rizik, because he's a friend of mine. Um, and I know him really well, and he does really good work. But we decided for this record, you know, we were going to just stick with the family. And we went with Daniel. So we rented a studio from one of our friends. Um, and uh, we decided to just go to town. And we did all the engineering and all the mixing and mastering, editing, all that stuff through Slade and Daniel. And it was awesome. Nice. It was yeah, really it sounds cool great. You it, I mean, it turned out great. Um, the, the the production, like I said, sounds great, and uh, and yeah, it's that uh, you know, it's that in your face death metal. So uh, so if you know, if you feel like you know, some some good old fashioned hard rock and roll, it's it, that's what you listen to. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's really like what we were going for. We had like a really um, we had a really rough old school sound for our demo, mm -hmm. um, and that's really what we were going for. We wanted something that sounded old and primitive and. Um, with the LP, I mean, we still, like me personally, I think we still have that sound. Like, I still think, like, if you listen to it compared to a lot of other, like, of like, or I won't say other, because we haven't really gotten into that, but a lot of mainstream metal bands, mm -hmm. you know, they have a very, like, um, it's a very polished sound. Right, you know? right, um, right, right. You can hear everything independently, whether right, you're listening right. to it on the world's worst headphones. Right. Or, right. you know, a crazy system. You can you hear can every hear single everything. kick drum from that double kick. And then... Yeah. And, then, and we have a little bit of that, mm -hmm. but we really tried to, like, blend everything mm -hmm. and give everything that natural sound and, you know, make it still sound primitive and boomy like you would hear at a show, you know? Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting you mentioned that because uh, uh, that's that's something I think about sometimes too. You know, I, I grew up listening to uh, to punk rock, and um, and sometimes when you hear your your favorite band come out with, you know, they may be progressing um, in their career, and they come out with this really polished album, and it may be good, but it it kind of doesn't have that same soul as 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 some of the 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 more lo-fi recordings um but yeah, yeah I, I think you you guys found a good balance because it it sounds good but it doesn't sound too polished yeah I've, we've got a couple like you know a couple of youtube comments that are like way too clean way too clean and i'm like <laughs> Still, yeah. i mean like we i i personally enjoy the clean sound i do yeah. enjoy a clean sound yeah. because mm -hmm. i you know i pay attention to all those details you know when i've spent so many years like writing music and recording in studios where we have no idea what we're doing 
And so hearing something kind of polished, I'm like, okay, like I can hear the work we put into it, you know, but I, there's just nothing like that dirty ass sound, you know, and that's, we tried to find a healthy balance. Yeah, it truly is. Yeah. So, and I think that's what makes like this kind of resurgence of the old school. It's Mm -hmm. what makes it so fun. And it may, it's what's making it so inviting for kids, you know, to get, get into death metal is you know, that re- just that refreshing, nasty, I don't know what I'm doing sound, you know, yeah, it's yeah, primitive and badass, you know, totally. It's funny because it's almost like the audio equivalent of putting um, a vintage filter on a photo, you know what I mean? Yeah, you, for you sure. Got the, you got these photos uh, that are old and they look cool because they're vintage. Um, mm. And so you want to, a lot of people want to re- recreate that nostalgic feeling. So they throw these filters on their photos. And it's, yeah. you know, with today's technology and today's, uh, you know, DAWs, it's, it's so easy to make well-produced sounding music. Uh, yeah. So in, in a way, you know, it's, it's, still a, it's still a crazy art form to do it really well. But as far as clarity goes and all that other stuff, uh, you can get a pretty clear recording easily, mm-hmm. a lot more easily than they might have in the past. Um, yeah. So, it, but a lot of the, the best music, you know, from the 70s and the 80s, especially in metal, um, you know, it they you're you're trying to recreate that feeling that from the some those people you're listening to so for sure yeah that's that's awesome so yeah i think you guys found a good balance with that um you Thanks, know of man. course 2020 has got a uh you know i don't know if you guys <laughs> were you planning on touring um what's what uh what what what, what did 2020 have planned and <laughs> or what did you have planned and what do you have planned now that 2020 uh said no. <laughs> well, um, we uh, we did have a few things. We actually had a tour with Creeping Death, and there was quite a few bands on different regional sections of the tour in June. It was a month long tour. Um, we're hoping to reschedule it. Uh, I think it is being rescheduled, but that was a huge hit uh, because that would have been our first U.S. tour. That would have been before the signing, or well, after the signing, but before a single, um, and. I think that would have helped us a lot. That was a huge bummer because um, we absolutely love those guys. They're literally our brothers. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, then we had a we had a bigger tour scheduled for November, which was when the record was originally supposed to come out. Um, it was with Gate Creeper and Devourment, um, and that uh, I think Sanguasuga Bog was on that too. And it, that tour was just going to be a monster house. Like it was going to be so insane, and that was the biggest tour that would have been the biggest tour I've ever been on and ever right. experienced. Um, huh. It was like, we were so bummed. Yeah. I, I can't even words can't even describe. Like I literally thought everything was just ending. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, you know, it, it, it's crazy. Cause we had like the record deal that mm-hmm. we got right before all this, like literally r- April, like right. The, the, right before all this started happening. So we're like super happy and just have this unreal feeling. And then you know, a shroud of just destruction <laughs> hits the uh-huh. world mm-hmm. <laughs> and yeah. everything's on fire. Everything's like, feels like it's falling apart. So it's like happy, super not happy. Like it was, it was rough. And, you know, we have kind of been like focusing on like creating opportunities ourselves right now. Um, yeah. I mean, it's awesome having like the label support and having like a bigger reach, but like, really like with touring on hiatus right now uh even playing shows not being possible we've really just like focused on the the opportunities that we have um to create like you know more videos more Mm -hmm. streaming opportunities like just all those things like we're reaching out to kind of do for ourselves to fill that void in the time you know that we have yeah. i mean yeah. it's as far as like any further stuff i mean there have been some names i can't really talk about right now mm-hmm. thrown around but we did um just uh have an agreement with sound talent touring so there's some like huge bands that tour through that company um and nice. some of the biggest there's some of the biggest names like as far as agents go um on there so like they i just had our first meeting with them two days ago and Mm. it was awesome i mean they're pretty confident that touring is going to start up i mean obviously we don't know you know but they're confident that touring will be back at it in 2022 and you know 
I'm just going to have 2022. Faith in it. Did they say 22 or 21? They said 2022 for sure, but they're <laughs> hoping best case scenario by spring of 2021. So, okay. I mean, obviously, like, man, yeah, you, like know, you said, we, we don't who, know, what is the new normal? You know, like, know. we don't, we don't know, man. Like, nah. there's, there's no way to know. And, you know, I'm, I'm sure it's going to be playing table shows for a while. Um, I don't know. That's, I'm trying to just be optimistic. And, sure. You know, yeah. Yeah. We'll and see what the, happens. You know, silver lining, you got your, your, your deal right before this happened. Um, yeah, you know, so sure. although you, you missed your, uh, you missed the tour that was supposed to happen, like, literally every artist you know we're yeah. talking to you know so it's not a unique yeah. situation if that's any consolation uh which it kind of is it kind of isn't but uh i i you know but yeah like i said silver lining is you did get that deal right before so you know just in the nick of time maybe because who knows what would have happened if uh if they waited they oh, dragged man. their feet on that a little bit i don't even want to think about it <laughs> honestly like that's that's why like that's why i say it's like super happy and also like super down at the same sure, time sure sure like, i know exactly you know, what you mean we're we are super fortunate we are super fortunate right like, we were able to get the help that we needed to like make the vision that we have come to life and right you know we, we're just super thankful and i mean it's we're we're extremely lucky and it's awesome and we uh we're trying to we're trying to use every resource we have to like make things happen we i mean we've we've done like a ton of music videos um, that's awesome we've just like we've just exhausted our resources to make as much <laughs> content as possible um we're working on a live stream right now that's um we have we just kind of went we it, it was way bigger like of a of a of a hassle than we thought it would be um but isn't we it, have isn't it always <laughs> yeah it's gonna be sort of in the vein of like tales from the crypt um, oh that's awesome it's, it's it's with us creeping death and devourment and we're gonna have like some really cool stuff in between the sets and it's it's like a whole it's gonna be about an hour long i love you know? that idea and it, like we man we really went in on it like we had to like re we had to pretty much buy an entire pa and sound system and mics and console and you know lights and we had to rent a venue and build a stage basically like, it was it was uh it's a lot that, that we sounds used, awesome so. When do you think? Just go. When do you go think ahead. you might drop some of that content? Um, we're aiming for like the sort of like the middle to end of November. Um, okay. We had like I had like a painting design, uh, like a painting done for it. Uh -huh. uh, we're gonna do like some crazy stuff with it. We're gonna I, make it, it's, it's I, gonna be I love super that old idea. school, man. It's gonna be super old school. We're even yeah we we got some cool stuff that we're trying to do to fill the void, you know. Yeah. All the play shows. So. Yeah, that's all you can do, and yeah i gotta say i love that idea especially for metal bands to, to have like a tales from the crypt and i i don't know if you want to not do any spoilers but i imagine there being like some sort of creepy host and him oh, yeah. going from one band to the next band instead yep. of instead of the horror stories you're going yep. to each band set that's awesome that's yeah, such it's, a great it's idea a, it's so a, a lot of the music videos that we're having done are done by the same guy mm -hmm. a super good friend he's actually just become a brother he's we've worked so closely together at this point. It's his name's Tanner McArdle. He's done like some stuff for some other bands and he's done um, music videos for like mortal wound, which is another maggot stomp band. Mm. Um, and uh, he's doing a lot of videos for us and he's the one that's like involved in filming some of the in-between stuff with like the host and everything. It's awesome, man. Like I I'm super happy. <laughs> I'm super happy with it. And it's honestly hilarious. Too. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. going to be so funny. Yeah. I, I uh, would hope. Yeah. You, you'd hope you wasn't taking yeah. it itself too seriously. But, no, uh, no, 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 no. Uh, it's, it's cheesy in the best way possible. Sure. Sure. That's For awesome. Sure. That's yeah. exactly how you'd want it to be just like tales from the crypt. I mean, he was scary, yeah. but he was supposed to be kind of, you know, he was supposed to be kind of funny too. Yeah. We kind of named, we kind of aim, or aimed it uh, to be similar to like Tales from the Crypt, and there's in like another movie called Body Bags. Mm. Uh, from the I don't know 90s. if I've seen that one. It's good. It's really good. It's it's sort of like a knockoff Tales from the Crypt, but a movie version okay. of it. Okay. Okay. Um, similar. Really, really good. And f the host is super funny and stuff. So some some stuff like that. Like you know, that's uh, what well, who who was in that Body Bags movie? Uh, I don't remember any like specifics specific like okay. known actors but i think it was a um uh john carpenter or it was or wes craven i can't remember 
Okay. Okay. Uh, it's it's super good. <laughs> I mean, like I watched it again because I saw it, you know, a long time ago, um, and I watched it pretty recently. And uh, again, and I was just like, God, this is just like genius. <laughs> they need there yeah. needs to be more shows like this. So yeah, uh, no, no, maybe we might continue to do do this whole thing. Yeah, I think it's a great concept. Um, well, that's yeah, it's like you said, you know we don't know what the new normal is, so we should just yeah. proceed as if this is the normal. I think, uh, mm-hmm. I, I think it's understandable. Anybody who put the, who put the pause button on, um, when this first started going down, uh, I think most people did put the pause button down because bond. Cause I, I think we were like, Oh, my last few weeks or something, you know? So I called, <laughs> you know, I'll take a little vacay. But, yeah. uh, at this point, I think you have to, you know, use, you know, do what you can with what you got. Yep, which it absolutely. sounds like you guys are, are totally doing well we're, <laughs> we're super stoked to hear it and see it and um for those who haven't already checked it out um check out frozen souls new single and do you have more singles coming out this year anything yeah else? we actually have uh this coming friday on the 30th uh-huh. we have an, we have another video coming out for um the uh the re-recording of encased in ice okay nice. um so we redid the demo songs and put all three of the original songs that we did, not Witch's Coven, um, all three of the originals on the record. So um, we we decided to hit a video for Encased in Ice because it's one of the most important songs that we've ever written as a band. And it just, yeah, it, we think it, it, it didn't get the justice that it deserved, that we felt it deserved, that it, for, for the amount of amount of mental power we put into that Mm -hmm. so we redid it and we did it what we consider is better and Mm -hmm. uh yeah hit it with a pretty brutal video so nice yeah it hits uh in the morning um 9 a.m yeah friday morning at 9 a.m central time so all right all right we'll be on the lookout for that um so we'd like to end on the interview just by asking if you had one piece of advice to give to aspiring artists what would it be Um, you know, like, this is something that, like, I think a lot, especially, I think about a lot, especially since, like, there's been a bunch of, like, younger kids and stuff starting death metal. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, I've been, like, paying attention closely to them and when they tag us and when they try to do cover songs and, you know, um, I, I, I think the, the biggest piece of advice that I can have is, is, like, don't let the haters like keep you down. Um, Mm -hmm. That seems kind of like cliche and stuff and what not to say, but like there's a lot of them out there (laughs) and they hate and they, they hate on bands that are trying, you know Mm -hmm. Um, it doesn't matter if like you got your influences from this or that, like you have to learn, you have to try and try no matter what and push. And if you want it, don't stop, go as hard as you can, as fast as you can and just push and push and push and eventually good things will happen and people will notice and really put the time and effort into making sure that the experience that your music and your band is giving is special and has a lot of care behind it, It has a lot of like energy. And I think, um, I think good things will happen for you. And, uh, I will say that there's this one band I'll shout out, um, wretched inferno. They're mm-hmm. all under the age of 17 and they are their energy. It, it's, it's just like, it just makes me so happy to see kids getting into death metal. They're recording their demos with like rock band instruments. <laughs> and it's honestly yeah. sick. Like it sounds good. Uh-huh. Um, it's brutal. And they, they just have like, they have hearts of gold. And, uh, I, I think uh, I think trying like that is what we need. It's what everyone needs to keep doing. And they're not letting a pandemic stop them. You know, they're going to town. Mm-hmm. Um, they did a cover of In Case in Ice, and it was just it just made my heart happy. It's it's awesome. And yeah, just try hard. Don't let anybody stop you. You know, that's the most important thing. Just keep going. Do your research. Do your homework, and uh, and keep going. That's that's great advice. And isn't that the best? the best feeling does it oh, i mean dude. more yeah. more than anything just just seeing someone yeah. who whose lives you've touched in some small way yeah um, it's absolutely insane because we never imagined anything like that would happen but we're getting messages um in the video that we're putting out on friday you'll see there's 
there's just the, the front row is just lined with kids and, and they're, they're kids and they're like, sl- I mean, they tore the barrier down <laughs> at the venue and they were slamming it down nice. on the ground. And I was just like, <laughs> fuck yes. <laughs> it's awesome. I mean, it's awesome because the only way that, I mean, heavy music used to be a lot more popular, you know, mm, especially yeah, totally. like in the 70s and 80s, you know, local hair metal shows and stuff. There'd be a thousand people there. I mean, yeah. you see it in documentaries. It, and it everything. was pop music. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And now, nowadays, you know, electronic music has taken over, which I love. Don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, absolutely love it. But, um, you know, the only way heavy music stays is is with the younger generations and, you know, it, it, embrace them, you know, embrace them and bring them in and, you know, let's have fun and, you know, yeah. So it's, yeah. Yeah. I mean, like you said, put, is, you'll, you'll get what you put into it. You know, you put yeah. love into it, you'll get some love back. And, sure. um, and the, it, and about the haters, um, you know, I think sometimes with social media, it's hard to, it's hard to remember that often the, the loudest voices are the minority. You know what I mean? Most people, yeah. you know, a lot of people, I would say most people don't comment on social media posts. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They, they might yeah. see your music, they might like it and they're, they'll be like, Oh, that's, that's good. And they'll move on, you know, or they'll yeah. love it. And even if they love it, they might say that's rad. And they might go stream you and it doesn't mean they're going to comment on your post or anything, but, uh, yep. but it's usually the the people who might have, you know, a chip on their shoulder who, who yeah. want to comment something poorly. Um, yeah. But, <laughs> it's but, more, so, yeah. I mean, for me and us, you know, it's just hilarious. Like, yeah. I mean, I think like <laughs> there's like a comment, um, a comment on one of, on our YouTube video that like literally just made me laugh. Like, <laughs> cause the guy's like the music, the music is really, really good. And the instruments sound good and the vocals sound good, but does the vocalist just eat cheeseburgers? <laughs> like, tell that, put him on a diet. Or, I don't remember exactly. What, it was just hilarious to me. Yeah. I'm like, sick. He likes our music. Yeah, it, you know? I mean, well, that's all. But, that's all I hear from it. You know what I mean? It sounds like a lot of compliments mixed with a uh, yeah. just a little piece of advice. <laughs> yeah. Hey, man. Appreciate you, dude. Yeah. Like, I'm trying. Bring me the bad word, dude.